Good evening, everybody. So we're going to start discipleship class number four. So what we're going to do tonight is that we're going to go through reviewing our soul winning, actual practice in soul winning. So some of the people, uh, they will get a chance to kind of see how it will appear and sound like in soul winning practice. That way they can feel encouraged and not discouraged. Now, what I'm going to do then is this, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to first do the soul winning to all of you, okay? I'm going to first do the soul winning to all of you, and then you just pay attention and listen, and then after that, you guys give it a shot after that, okay? So then what do I do first? So let's assume the two methods uh, are street preaching, which is street preaching and tracking, and then there's a second method, which is door knocking. So I'm going to start doing the two methods here. It might kind of look weird right now, but this is practice. That way people can see how it works. So door knocking, visitation, street preaching, and tracking. So here I go, passing out chick tracks to everybody. Oh, hi, how's it going? Pleasure to meet you. Free comic for you. Oh, hi, how's it going? Free comic for you. Oh, hi, how's it going? Free comic for you. And then depending upon a certain person where I feel like that I can talk to the person or maybe the person stopping at a red light waiting for the person to walk, I go, oh, hey, how's it going? Oh, by the way, just want to ask you a quick question. If you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you can go to heaven? The person will say, I don't know. I said, oh, okay. Well, now what just happened? I finished intro. Oh, well, you know, the Bible says this in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, do you know what sin is? Okay, well, sin is basically any bad thing that you and I have done before in our lives. And the Bible says that everyone has sinned before. I'm sure you'll admit that you've sinned before, right? Of course, all of us have sinned before. The person says yes. Well, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, but the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the Bible says here that there's a second death after we die, and that's a burning hell. The punishment for our sins is burning in hell forever. But the Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you know the story of Jesus? Okay, well, basically, the story of Jesus goes like this, that Jesus, he is God, lived up in heaven, decided to come down here on earth and transform himself into a man. He lived 33 and a half years as a human, but never sinned at all. But then there were people who got jealous at him, and they framed him on phony charges, and they just murdered him into a bloody pulp. They crucified him on a cross. But he didn't stay dead. He was buried and three days later resurrected from the dead. And he's right now in heaven. You ever wonder why Jesus went through all that bloody mess for us? Why do you think that's so important? Do you know why? Well, remember, the problem is sin, right? That's why we go to hell, remember? Yeah, so because we've sinned before, we go to hell. So the only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus went through all that bloody mess, so that his blood can wash away our sins. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the Bible says here that, Doing good things cannot save you. So getting baptized, going to church, or any good thing you do in your life cannot save you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10, For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The Bible says in order to be saved, you must repent. So repent, basically it means that you got to be sorry for the sins you have committed against God. Do you repent as a sinner? Okay. 
you repent as a sinner? The Bible says, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Do you believe everything you've heard in the gospel so far? Okay, great, so you believe it. So then all you have to do is just say it to God. That's it. And you're done. All you have to do is just say to God that you believe everything you've heard in the gospel so far. So how about it? It only takes less than 15 seconds to just say it to God. I'll even help you out. I'll give you the words on how to say it. And you just repeat after me. 15 seconds won't take longer than that. We're done. How about it? All right, I'll do it, says the person. Okay, great. So now remember this is that repeating these words cannot save you. I'm going to give you the words to repeat after me, but repeating these words cannot save you. It's believing in the gospel. You believed. You only trust in the blood of Jesus to save you. I'm just helping you say it. That's it. All right. So I'm going to give you the words you repeat after me. Dear God, <clears throat> I repent as a sinner. I believe Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sins. So I only trust in that alone, not my good works, to save me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Boom. You're done. Now, notice right here that I went through all these steps. Now, obviously, when you're talking to people, it's not like exactly robotic word for word that I wrote out. But you notice it was almost uh, like exactly similar, right? So that's the goal is to make it flow easily like you're talking to somebody. You also notice that when I was doing this, rarely did I give the questions, only the ones that I mentioned to you to ask the questions. So that's the only time. So this is how I did the practice. So it's going to be now up to you to actually try to practice for yourself. All right, so comes the door, knock, 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 uh, opens the door. <laughs> Hi, uh, so as not to scare you, uh, we're not a uh, Jehovah Witness or Mormon or trying to sell you anything. Uh, we're just going around the neighborhood passing out free comics. Uh, I have them for you here oh, if you'd like. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so that we're not strangers or anything. Um, mm -hmm. uh, my name is Robert. Uh, Gene. Uh, okay, nice to meet you, Gene. Nice to meet you. Uh, so, Gene, I, I, I just have one quick question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you could go to heaven? No, I'm not sure. Okay, okay, that, that, that's fine, Gene. We'll, 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 the Bible says here in uh, Romans 3.23, uh, For all have sinned and come short to, of the glory of God. Uh, so, um, you know, do you know what sin is? No, I don't know what sin is. Oh, okay, so sin is, is just <clears throat> simply any bad thing you've done in your body, okay? So, um, ha have you sinned? Oh, sure, I've sinned. Yeah, yeah, so you've done, okay, so the Bible says uh, here in Revelations uh, 21, 8. Uh, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So because of your sin, the punishment is a burning hell. Okay? But here in Romans 5.28, the Bible also says, But God commanded his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, uh, Gene, do you know the story of Jesus? No, I don't. Okay, okay. Well, we'll simply put, uh, Jesus is God. He lived up in heaven. And then he became a man like you and I. And he lived on earth for 33 and a half years without committing any sins. And then men who were jealous of him, they framed him. They had him crucified. And then he died and he was buried. And then he raised himself from the dead. And now he is up in heaven. Gene, do you know why Jesus went through all of that bloody mess? No, for I don't. Us? Okay, um, it's your sin, remember? Mm. Uh, it's your sin. That's why you can't go to heaven. That's what you have to pay for, right? And, and, and that's illustrated here in, in five, uh, 5 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, 
we shall be saved from wrath through him, right? The wrath we just we just read about, right? So then if you can believe that here in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So nothing you do, Gene, not your good works, not going to church, not the water baptism, none of those can save you. It's what we just said a moment ago, the blood of Jesus Christ that saves you from that wrath, right? So then, mm. if you could believe that, to get saved, you must repent. And that's illustrated here in 2 Corinthians 7.10. For godly sorrows worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Right, so for God these sorrows worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. So you must uh, feel sorry for your sins. That, that is a repentance. So, uh, Gene, do you feel sorry? Do you repent for your sins for being a sinner? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so if you repent for it, the Bible says the last thing you need to do is uh, say that to God, and, and that's here in Romans ten nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Um, do you believe everything you've heard so far in the gospel, Gene? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So so then if, if you do believe, Gene, um, the last thing you need to do is say it to God, Gene. So, um, so all you have to do now to say it to God in less than 15 seconds. How about it? Would you be willing to tell God that you believe the gospel in under about 15 seconds? Sure, why not? Okay, okay, praise God. So uh, if, if you're willing to say that, just one more thing, that this prayer, saying these prayers, w will not save you. Mm -hmm. it, it is what we said before, the blood of Jesus Christ that will save you. So then knowing that the words you're saying are just telling God, I believe the gospel, what you did, okay? Got it. Okay, okay, praise God. So uh, if you're ready to go, um, dear God. Dear God. I repent. I repent. As a sinner. As a sinner. I believe. I believe. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. Who died. Who died. Buried and. Buried and. Resurrected. Resurrected. So. So. His blood. His blood. Can wash. Can wash. Away. Away. My sins. My sins. So I. So I. Only trust. Only trust. In the blood. In the blood. Alone. Alone. To save. To save. And not. And not. My good works. My good works. Save me from hell. Save me from hell. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. Hi, we're just going around the neighborhood passing out free comics. As not to scare you, we're not Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses on trying or trying to sell you something. Here's one for you. So what? So that we're not <clears throat> strangers. My name is Tony. What's your name? Hi, Dan. Nice day out today. I just want to ask you a quick question. If you were to die today. Are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? Uh, Romans 3.2.3 3 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> Everyone sinned and can't go to heaven. Do you know what sin is? Have you sinned before? Revelations 2.21.8 Because they've sinned, the punishment is a burning hell. Do you know the story of Jesus? Jesus is God who lived up in heaven, who came down to earth and became a man. He lived for 33 and a half years without committing any sin. Then there were people who were jealous of him, framed him on phony charges and crucified him. Then he was buried and raised himself from the dead. Now he is up in heaven. That's the basic gospel. Crucified, buried, and risen. Do you know why Jesus went through the bloody mess for us? 
It's because remember your sin is the problem, why you can't go to heaven, right? The only thing that can wash away your sins is the blood of Jesus Christ. So all you have to do is say it to God in less than 15 seconds. How about it, Dan? Would you be willing to say to God that you believe the gospel? I'll even help you say it to God. All you have to do is repeat after me. It will only take about 15 seconds. Say this prayer, okay? So I'm going to give the words to repeat. But remember, repeating these this prayer doesn't save you. It's you telling or saying to God, you believe in the, the gospel. The prayer, follow me now. Dear God, I repent as a sinner. I believe Jesus is God who died, was buried, and resurrected so his blood can wash away my sins. So I only trust in the blood alone. Not so save not by my good works. Save from hell. Save me from hell. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. There you go, Dan. If you believe that with your heart, you're saved. Hey, how you doing there? Um, we're not moving our Jehovah Witnesses, but if you are, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, by the way, my name is Jack. Pleased to meet you there. Well, uh, we're going around our neighborhood here giving away free comics. Here you go. Uh, while you're looking at that, I want to ask you, if you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? All right. Well, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And uh, have you ever sinned before? Okay. Well, sin sin is basically um, any, any bad thing you've ever done in your life, even the smallest thing. Okay. Uh, so have you ever sinned? Okay. Amen. We all have. Okay. Uh, and we see here in Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 21, 8 states that, but the fearful, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall see their part in a, in a lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Okay, we see that because of the penalty, the penalty of sin uh, against God is hell. Okay. But God has left us a plan uh, of salvation. We see that in Romans 5, uh, verse 8. It says, But God commends his love towards us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay? Um, so do you know the story of Jesus? Well, Jesus is God. He became man. He lived a sinless life. He was he was he died. He was crucified, died, and, and was buried. And because he is God, he resurrected and ascended into heaven according to prophecy. Okay, all right, and a quick question here. Uh, we actually in Romans, uh, uh, do you know why Jesus had to go through all this? Okay, well, he had to go through all this because, um, what we spoke about earlier is because of the problem of sin. Okay, um, and the only thing to 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 cleanse us from that sin is the blood of Jesus. We are washed in his blood, uh, and and that's the only way that we can we can be saved okay and we see that in Romans 5 9 it says but God so much more than being now justified uh, by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him okay we see that right there so what what's the only thing that can save that can that can uh, wash your sins away um, and and get you saved okay yeah, amen. It's only through. So remember, it's only through the blood of Jesus. Okay, uh, we see here in uh, in Galatians, uh, sorry, in Ephesians, uh, chapter two, verses uh, eight and nine, <clears throat> says, "For by grace are ye saved, and not of yourselves. Um, it is a gift. Uh, it is a gift of God, right? Uh, and not of works." lest any man should boast okay so we see there that uh, that salvation is a gift from god and not and we can't earn our way 
okay a couple a few things here i want to uh, give you uh that that can get you saved uh a few misconceptions here so uh number one the thing that can get you saved is water baptism cannot get you saved right second thing that can get you saved another thing would be let's say uh church membership church membership can get you saved right another thing that can get you saved is a uh, good works good works cannot get you saved okay all right all right so that's that's what that says that uh, in that verse and explains that it's it's a gift from god okay all right so uh in second corinthians uh is we see in second corinthians verse seven chapter seven verse ten it it, it says for godly sorrow worketh death uh work sor sorry for godly sorrow worketh a repentance uh to salvation not to be repented of um but the sorrow of the world worketh death. That basically means God, uh, godly sorrow is is feeling sorry for your sins that you've committed. Okay, uh, and so we have to feel sorry for the sins we committed against God um, in order for that. Okay, so we have to repent of our sins. Okay, and I'm sure you feel sorry for the sins you've committed against God. Am I correct? Okay, Amen. All right, so. Uh, in Romans ten nine it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that uh, that He has raised Him from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. Okay. So we see here, uh, and before that, uh, did do you believe in all that you've heard in the gospel so far? Okay, good. So now all you to do is say to God. Okay, and uh, I can even help you out with that. It'll only take 15 seconds. Uh, so would you like me to help you out with that? Okay, well, I, I, I'll I'll say the words and you can you can repeat after me. All right. And remember that just repeating it after me won't get you saved. Actually, it's believing in in the blood of Jesus. Okay, it's believing on that. Uh, he was he was he is God and he was raised from the dead. And, and resurrected into heaven okay we raised and you believe on the blood of jesus okay so let's go ahead and pray here all right ready dear god i am sorry for being a sinner i believe jesus is god who died resurrected and ascended into heaven according to prophecy um I believe that his blood cleanses me from all my sin and not of my good works. And in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. So if people online don't click discipleship number too often, then I know that you've been slacking somewhere. So discipleship number two online people got to click on that. Uh, the more that you do it in audio, see, the more easier it'll become. Yeah. yeah. So you notice why we're doing this practice thing, right? This is the pinnacle, the most important thing out of everything in discipleship is actually you doing it yourself. The reason why is it's easier to find out which areas you need to correct on. Because yeah. if I wrote everything out and all that, what's going to happen is this. Because I wrote everything out and you wrote it all out the problem is you may have written it all out but when you're actually doing it it's totally different isn't it it's always totally different yeah. yeah so the thing is is that i'm actually glad we did this practice thing and i told you you're gonna mess up the first time i told you that all right i stress that so many times everyone makes mistakes you know so don't feel bad don't feel embarrassed about that because sometimes it's a good thing that way you can really remember, oh, this is where I, I, I won't forget where I messed up on. I won't forget where I slipped up on. And you can actually do better on those things. Okay, so now do I have, uh, this was good too that we were practicing because I noticed also you were asking questions. Yeah, so Brother Tony, you were asking me questions in the middle of our practicing, right? Yeah, yeah why, how did that happen? Because you know better now during the witnessing when you were talking more on what to ask see so that's why this stuff is good yeah.
So I want to stress this to people watching us online too. That's why I stress about going to church and actually having experience with Bible-believing Christians. Now, I understand if people don't have Bible-believing churches out there, then uh, I guess we're your only church over there. I totally understand that. But if you have a Bible-believing church or you can drive to one, I stress that so much because actual experience with people is totally different than you writing it all down or knowing it in your head. See, I want to stress that so much to people online. That's why people online, uh, you're going to always struggle and become a burden to other people when you talk or fellowship with all that knowledge crammed in your head and you don't know how to use it, see. That's why actual experience is really, really good. That's why I'm glad we did this so that people can actually see it and taste it for themselves. I want to tell people online this, and I want to tell people this, is that's why it is perfectly natural to be nervous and soul winning. You know why? Because you feel like that you made mistakes and you goofed up and you look like an idiot. Well, you know, guess what? This pastor, he goofed up too many times in soul winning. That's why he became a good soul winner. <laughs> so let me repeat that again. The only reason why I was able to become a good soul winner is because I goofed up many times. There was this Hindu lady. I said this several times in my preaching. There was a Hindu lady that I was trying to witness and I didn't know how to say it. And then uh, she was like, uh, oh yeah, I believe in God. I prayed to him to get saved. And I was like, oh, okay then, you're saved. And then my visitation partner is like, hey, Jean, she meant her own God, her own Hindu religion. I was like, oh, and then I, I was so red faced, and I just walked over to the next door to do witness. <laughs> See, I, you, some people online are going, how can you make that mistake? How can you be so dumb? That's right, your pastor is dumb. <laughs> dumb enough to get 60,000 subscribers almost, and you guys signed up for discipleship. That's right. <laughs> but you see, that's how you become better. It's through those slip-ups that you learned exact better and you understand more now. Ah, now I see why I should word it that way, why that method is used and how I should do it next time. See, so I want to encourage, encourage people in our church and people online to please keep doing these practicing things and don't ever lose confidence or feel nervous about slipping up. I told you a gazillion times, you will, you will, you will mess up somewhere. And the first time is never perfect. It is never perfect. There's always a slip up somewhere. Okay then, so we're going to, uh, I'm going to give you some important things to note. I'm gonna look at Romans chapter 16. All right, Romans chapter 16. So this won't take long. Now, this is what I stress so much in beginner's class, and I don't care if you're good in soul winning or how much doctrine you know. If you don't pass this level, then my discipleship is in vain. I want to stress this so much. My entire discipleship with all of you will be in vain if you don't learn this thing. The number one problem I see with people, especially people who graduate, I'm telling you, even my own school, Pensacola Bible Institute, too, these guys know so much doctrine. Some of them even became, uh, a lot of them, a lot of people who learned from Dr. Upman's materials, they became real big and popular on YouTube as well. But the problem is, is that they always have this heady knowledge, and that is the number one problem you need to fix is that you got to have humility. So keep your hand in Romans 16 and your other ch uh, verse, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Now I want to stress this. If you don't learn this, then you're not going to grow. Okay? Now think about it. Some of you have grown already so much through discipleship already or through the preaching and teaching, right? Why is that? Think about it now. Why is that? It's because you sat down and listened. You did not open your big mouth. Now, you know what the problem with people is? Is that what they do is that when they listen to a preacher or a teacher who's not a Bible believer, now, don't get me wrong, if it's an apostate preacher or teacher, 
then definitely they should be pointed out. But if the person, if the pastor is a Bible-believing pastor who believes the King James Bible is perfect and believes in dispensationalism all the way down to dispensational salvations and then teaches you the deep stuff of the Bible, you got to learn that everyone is imperfect. No one's perfect. Not even I am perfect. So you got to realize if this is going to be my teacher, my pastor, for me to grow in, then I need to ignore his defects and imperfections and just sit down and listen so that I can benefit and grow. Look, if the pastor slips up or even the church slips up, that's on them, but not on you. So you don't have to sacrifice your maturity, your spiritual growth, just to fix up some pastor or church's immaturity or lack of spiritual growth. That's an important lesson I want you to learn. You want to be the most mature person out of the bunch. You want to be the most spiritual, most perfect person out of the bunch. So don't make the pastor or the, per the people in the church to your level. See? Because trust me, when you try to make them all like you, guess what? You're going to be different from them too. And what's going to happen is there's going to be this critical mindset and this judgmental attitude toward all each other rather than the love of Jesus Christ and you're not going to grow. You can't grow when you keep critiquing, critiquing, critiquing someone trying to train you and grow you right. So look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. Likewise ye what? Younger. Are, notice who the elders are at verse 1. Those are the pastors. Are you the elder who's feeding the flock of God? Are you the pastor who's feeding the church? If you're not then what do you need to do? Do you need to feed the flock? No, that's not your po position. Verse 5, you're the younger, right? What's your position? Straighten out the church, straighten out the pastor. No, if the pastor is the right pastor, Bible-believing pastor, Bible-believing church, no. Likewise, ye younger, what? Submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God, notice, does he say accept or resist? He resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. If you do that, notice verse 6, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may, what, exalt you in good time. Now this is an important lesson that I want people in the church and online, I, people just don't understand this. They have a problem with this. And that's why God won't use you, okay? The only reason why God blessed me with this much fruit is because I submitted. And I can't stress that so much. When you learn to submit, God's going to raise you up, okay? I don't want to keep repeating myself like a parrot where you get bored and you say, okay, I get the point. The reason why I'm being so repetitive is that I see people in church, people online, who just don't get that memo. And guess what? They don't come back to our church anymore. Guess what? They don't win a lot of souls to salvation. Guess what? You don't see them having a lot of fruits. Guess what? They become a burden to other Bible believers. And Bible believers said, you're so judgmental, you don't have any love. Because remember, the, uh, we got to realize this. The ones we got to point out the flaws and the errors are not the Bible believers, it's the what? The heretics. It's the one who bring in wrong doctrine. Not the church itself. The church itself, we're supposed to what? Edify each other. Love one another. You know what the Bible says? Love covereth a multitude of all sins. That's an important verse you got to understand, is that do you truly love the brother and sister in Christ? If you do, then what you're going to do is overlook that person's defects and flaws and say, and besides, if I were you, I'd think this way. I'm more worried about my spiritual state, not that person's spiritual state. And what I would be doing is this. What I would do if I were you is that if that person slipped up somewhere, let's say there's a pastor that may have slipped up somewhere in the middle of his teaching and preaching, what I would do is this. I wouldn't go, oh, he slipped up somewhere. Oh, well, because he slipped up, he's going to mess up right here. Then what happens? Then you lose an entire blessing and a valuable lesson by the time you reach the end of the message. What I would do if I got a Bible-believing preacher who may have slipped up someplace, I would go like this. Well, oh, that sounds like he slipped up there, but hey, I don't know. Maybe, 
uh, I'll just overlook that part. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I'll just overlook that and try to find something here that the pastor's saying that I might get a blessing out of and my, I might learn a valuable lesson out of. See that? When you have that attitude with every brother and sister in Christ and the pastor, you can enjoy fellowship better. See that? The love between each other would bond even better. See that? Because you're trying to find things to agree on. Trying to find things to unify each other on. Rather than finding things to disagree on. Finding things to cause divisions on. See that? Do you want to have a great fellowship with your brother and sister in Christ? It's not pointing out everything he does wrong. It's by trying to find things that you can agree and that's how we enjoy our conversations together, right? Why? Because there are stuff we agree on, and because we find things we agree on, we can talk about that for a long time, and we encourage each other so much, don't we? That's what happens, see? Look at Romans 16, Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, and we will read Romans 16. This is an important verse where people fail to understand, and they do delve into so much stuff, into evil, evil, evil out there. The conspiracy this, the conspiracy that. And then, uh, I mean, if you d dig into all that kind of stuff, you're going to become a burden to other people rather than a blessing to other people. And you don't want to be a burden to people. You want to be a blessing to people. Okay, so look at Romans 16, 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf... But I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Now, this is something very important, okay? Some people insist that I... Let me give you a good example right here, okay? There are, trust me, if there's a topic that I really want to get into, it's actually flat earth. That's a topic I really want to delve into, research and study, and then show all the sides to it. All right? I really... That's so interesting, a lot of these videos on flat earth. Uh, there are so many people who ask me to do a video on that. You know why I never did that? Because the thing is, I'm supposed to be wise, grow in more on what is good, right? And what? Simple concerning what? Evil. I'm too preoccupied in spending my time growing more in wisdom on what is good. See that? For example, discipling you, having you be able to sow in, having you able to grow, teaching, preaching, learning dispensationalism so that you can divide the Bible better, all these kind of stuff. That's being wise on what is good. About these like scientists, Freemasons trying to cover up the world is flat and uh, you know all this stuff of what they put in the, our food and the medicine, the pharmacies, and this elite group there, that elite group over there, that kind of stuff. What is that more important to know? Or is this more important to know about how can I get that soul saved? When's the last time you led a soul to Jesus Christ and then yet you keep harping about flat earth? Barking about um, 501c3 and then uh, the, the elites in this one and the elites in that one and what they put in the food? So that's why it's extremely important because uh, even my disciples will confess this. The more that you spend time on evil, 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 then you're, going to, you're not going to grow on what is good. You can never spend time on what is good. So that's why it is very important that in this discipleship class that you learn that you have to have a humble attitude where I came here to learn, not to teach. I mean, if you always come here to teach, then you're not going to grow, see that? If you're going to grow, then you have to have, I came here to sit down and listen and learn. And guess what? This pastor is an imperfect sinner, and you need to have the attitude that, listen, I did not come here to hear from the pastor. I came here to hear what God wants me to hear today. That's it. Because Gene Kim is going to definitely mess up someplace. So guess what? Just ignore the imperfections of Gene Kim and try to find something that Jesus wants you to hear and listen. That's the important thing I want to stress on. So people just don't understand that. Now, the thing is this, is that as a disciple, it's an important lesson to submit. But you need to, but the, I can understand the reason why people do, can't submit. They have a hard time. It's they have, they have the wrong kind of leaders, right? That's why I bark hard against 
these false prophets and pastors and all that. You know why I'm so hard on that? Because I understand what the youngers are thinking, the members are thinking. I'm having a hard time trusting these guys. See that? That's why I don't hesitate to use sarcasm. Point out these guys. Pastors have a great accountability and responsibility, especially some of you who specially learn from Ruckman stuff. You should know better. I, if I had the audacity and I was in my flesh, I'd call out your name and then rip your hide out because you just ruin so many people's lives and it just makes me stinking angry. So, I mean, trust me, I understand uh, you have a hard time trusting leaders. That's why I bark at them really hard. I don't hesitate sometimes. But the thing is, is that concerning, you got to learn to submit. Everyone's an imperfect, but I can understand. I can't really trust my leader. What if they're the wrong leader teaching wrong doctrine? So you need to find the right leaders, okay? So the right leaders is this. I'm going to review more at this, the next discipleship class, okay? Your homework assignment is to watch History of Bible Believers. History of Bible Believers, and I will put the video link below. Watch that video, okay? In that video, it will show you the right kind of leaders, the people you need to hang around with. You might say, why is that important? Because the Bible says, evil communications corrupt good manners. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. But he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Ye shall know them by their fruits. By their fruits ye shall know them. Trust me, it's important to hang, uh, hang around, find the right group of people. That is so important. You can't go solo. That is the worst thing you can do. When you go solo, then you can't find out which one is which, and you won't get along with anybody, and you can't be part of a movement that's bringing fruits. God does not work with one person. Amen. He works with the church, you got to understand. He works with, the, when he calls out a called out assembly, he says called out assembly. That's why he says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. It is important to be a part of that. You people online who don't have a Bible-believing church to go to, that's why I stress so much about, uh, that's why we're out there online, and I stress so much being a part of either a Bible-believing church, or you can even be a part of us online. But you need to find the right group and stay there. Don't go other place else, because if you do that, then you're going to have different leaders, and you're going to be back to square one where you can't learn to submit to a leader. See that? It will always be, I can never trust what anybody says. See that? That's the thing. You got to learn to submit to the leaders. But it's the right kind of leaders. Watch history of Bible, believing, uh, Bible believers and we'll review on what kind of leaders they are and you'll understand more and more. When you study, when you watch that video, I'm going to tell you this. Every single one of the Bible believing Christians have flaws. All right? Some of them even taught some things that were really wrong that I don't teach today. But the thing is this, is that what you got to understand is that ever since Jesus died on the cross, I'm going to explain it more, there was evolving and a learning process, and they didn't have the luxury of computer and technology and where you can search where the Bible easily like you did. Back then, they didn't even have access to the Bible freely. They had to hide scriptures in their vest pockets. That's why a lot of the things that they said or stood for, you can find wrong things easily. But you'll notice in time, Bible believers were evolving. There is a group that evolves. You have to stick to that group. And when you stick to that group, that's how God used for the past 2,000 years. And trust me, you want to be a part of that group where there were the fruits you can know God is in it and using. Not being solo where you have no fruits. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? 
perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.